Hello YouTube. In this video we'll be making calcium carbide in the lab. The reaction is fairly easy and straightforward, so let's get started. First a quick word on safety. This reaction uses extremely high heat and the product produced forms a flammable gas when reacted with water. Impurities in the final product can also form poisonous gases. The reaction should be only done outside or in a fume hood. To run this reaction, you'll need the following items. A small borosilicate glass tube. This is a 10 millimeter by 75 millimeter culture tube. Some calcium metal turnings. And powdered carbon. Begin by placing a very small amount of calcium metal at the bottom of the tube. You just want to fill the bottom. Adding too much calcium will cause you heating issues later. Try to get the calcium to sit as flat as possible on the bottom of the tube. Now very carefully add about two times the volume of carbon powder on top of the calcium. Being careful not to tap the tube. You want the carbon to sit on top of the calcium as much as possible. Do not tap the tube to pack the contents as this will cause the reaction to fail later. Now begin to heat the tube with a regular propane torch. Focus on just heating the calcium and do not worry about the carbon. You may notice a small amount of off-gassing that causes the carbon powder to puff around in the tube. That's expected. After a few seconds of heating, the calcium will begin to turn a dull red with a bright yellow color. However, the reaction has not occurred until you see this. Did you see it? The calcium turns a bright white then red color as it reacts with the carbon. This is why you want a small amount of calcium at the bottom of the tube. If you tap the tube too much, causing the carbon to get between the glass and the calcium or use too much calcium, it will become extremely difficult to heat the calcium to a temperature needed to initiate the reaction. If you do not see the brightening of the calcium, you have not formed any product. I continue to heat the end of the tube for at least a minute longer to be sure all the calcium has reacted. Then let the tube cool. After the tube is cool, we can collect our product at the end of the tube. This can be a pain and requires breaking the tube to release the product. Be patient, take your time, and be careful not to cut yourself. Here's one that I made. You can see it takes on a sort of gray to brown color. It's not pure. It will have some unreacted calcium, oxides, and other contaminants that may have been in the original calcium metal. Since we'll be using it to make acetylene, the impurities are not that big of a deal, other than for a safety standpoint. Let's give it a try. I'm going to first try the acetylene soap bubble experiment. You just add some soap to water, stir, and then add the carbide. As the bubbles form, you can ignite them. This worked, but not very well. I think I used way too much soap and caused only small bubbles to form. So I threw that out and made a new batch of soap water with less soap. This gave decent results. However, the best results by far are from no soap and just water. You can see the black carbon soot after the gas is ignited. This is a good indicator of acetylene. A small amount of hydrogen is also being formed due to unreacted calcium. However, it doesn't give off black soot when ignited. Also, acetylene has a very characteristic odor, giving its presence away. Acetylene and hydrogen are the two gases I know are being made. However, other impurities can also be giving off gases, like phosgene. This is why the reaction should always be performed outside. Okay, one more experiment to show that we have acetylene. This test tube is half full with a water bromine solution. I'm going to add to it some pure calcium carbide. Notice that the red begins to disappear. This is because the bromine is being attacked by the triple bond of the acetylene molecule, forming 1122 tetrabromoethane and other byproducts. As a bromine is used up, the water goes clear. Now let's try this experiment using our product. 
As you can see, it's hard to tell due to all the other junk that clouds the solution. So let's filter. And you can start to see that the solution is now clear. This is not 100% proof in itself that we have calcium carbide, but with this, plus the soot and the smell, we can determine with some reasonable assurance that we have calcium carbide. Thanks for watching.